Linear Algebra 2, Lecture 16, Problem Session. Problem 1. Diagonalize, in an orthonormal basis, the symmetric linear map F from E4 to E4, given by the following matrix in the standard basis. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. We start our solution by computing the characteristic polynomial. So the characteristic polynomial of this linear operator is the determinant of the matrix where we take the matrix of our linear operator in the standard basis and subtract x on the main diagonal. One can observe that the sum of elements in each column is equal to 2 minus x. Therefore, at the first step in the computation of this determinant, we add all rows to the first row. This does not change the determinant, and the first row becomes 2 minus x, 2 minus x, 2 minus x, 2 minus x. So we have a common factor 2 minus x in the first row, which we can move out, and now we have the matrix where the first row is 1, 1, 1, 1. So we can use 1 in the position 1, 1 to kill 1s in the first column, so in row 2 and in row 4. So we subtract row 1 from row 2 and row 4, and this does not change the determinant. So we have now 2 minus x times the determinant of the matrix, where we have the first row 1, 1, 1, 1, and the rest of the elements in the first column are 0. So the determinant of this matrix is the determinant of the 3 times 3 matrix, which is formed by the second, third, and fourth rows and second, third, and fourth columns. So we get the determinant of the matrix, minus x minus 1, 0 minus 1, 1 minus x 1, minus 1, 0, minus x minus 1. So this determinant we can expand with respect to the second column. So we have two zeros in the second column, so the corresponding summons will just disappear. And what is left is minus x times the 2 times 2 determinant in position 1, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, and 3, 3. So we get minus x times 2 minus x times the 2 times 2 determinant minus x minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus x minus 1. Again, we can observe that the sum in the first and the second column is the same. So we add row 2 to row 1, and we get the determinant minus x minus 2, minus x minus 2, minus 1, minus x minus 1. So we again move out the common factor minus x minus 2 from the first row. We get minus x times 2 minus x times minus x minus 2 times the determinant 1, 1, minus 1, minus x minus 1. So we add row 1 to row 2 to make it 1, 1, 0, minus x, and this determinant becomes minus x. Now when we put everything together, we get that the determinant of the original matrix is x squared times 2 minus x times minus 2 minus x. So we have three eigenvalues. The eigenvalue 0 with algebraic multiplicity 2, the eigenvalue 2 with algebraic multiplicity 1, and the eigenvalue minus 2 with algebraic multiplicity 1. Let us now determine a basis and even an orthonormal basis in the eigenspace for each of these three eigenvalues. We start with the first eigenvalue lambda 1, which is equal to 0. The eigenvectors for this eigenvalue are the solutions to the homogeneous system of linear equations whose matrix is obtained from the original matrix by subtracting 0 on the main diagonal. So it is just the original matrix. In the original matrix, we see that row 1 and row 3 are the same, so we can delete row 1. And also row 2 and row 4 are the same, so we delete row 4. And we end up with the matrix 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. 
So here we have leading elements in column 1 and 2. So we take x3 and x4 as free variables and obtain from the first row x1 is equal to minus x3. From the second row x2 is equal to minus x4. And then for the free variables, the trivial equations x3 is equal to x3 and x4 is equal to x4. Now we write this in the vector form. The vector x1, x2, x3, x4 is equal to x3 times the coefficient vector minus 1, 0, 1, 0, plus x4 times the coefficient vector 0, minus 1, 0, 1. Consequently, the coefficient vectors v1, which is minus 1, 0, 1, 0, and v2, which is 0, minus 1, 0, 1, these two vectors form a basis in the eigenspace for f with eigenvalue 0. Note that we got lucky. The two vectors which we got, v1 and v2, are orthogonal. So in order to get an orthonormal basis, we just need to make these two vectors lengths 1. So we multiply them by some scalars so that the outcome has lengths 1. So we define the vector w1 as v1 divided by the length of v1. The vector v1 is minus 1, 0, 1, 0. Its length is square root of 2. So w1 is 1 divided by the square root of 2 times minus 1, 0, 1, 0. Similarly, w2 is v2 divided by the length of v2. v2 is 0, minus 1, 0, 1. The length is the root of 2. So w2 is 1 divided by the root of 2, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. And the vectors w1 and w2, they form an orthonormal basis in the eigenspace for f corresponding to the eigenvalue 0. Next eigenvalue is lambda 2, which is equal to 2. And the eigenvectors for this eigenvalue are the solutions to the homogeneous system of linear equations whose matrix is obtained from the original matrix by subtracting 2 on the main diagonal. And now here in this matrix, one can observe that the sum of elements in each row is 0. This means that the vector 1, 1, 1, 1 is a solution to this homogeneous system of linear equations. We denote this vector by V3. Since the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue 2 is 1, the geometric multiplicity is automatically 1, and we have one linearly independent vector, which is an eigenvector, so this vector forms a basis in the eigenspace for f corresponding to the eigenvalue 2. So this is one vector, we only need to norm it to get an O and B. So we define W3 as V3 divided by the length of V3. V3 is 1, 1, 1, 1. Its length is 2. So the O and B is formed by the vector 1 divided by 2 times 1, 1, 1, 1. The last eigenvalue is lambda 3 is equal to minus 2. The eigenvectors for this eigenvalue are the solutions to the homogeneous system of linear equations whose matrix is obtained from the original matrix by subtracting minus 2 on the main diagonal. So this is the matrix 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2. And here it is easy to notice that the alternating sum of elements in each row is 0. So the vector 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 is a solution to this system. And since the algebraic multiplicity of our eigenvalue minus 2 is 1, the geometric multiplicity is automatically 1, and therefore this vector v4 forms a basis in the eigenspace for f with eigenvalue minus 2. Again, we only need to norm it, so we divide it by its length and denote the outcome by w4. v4 was 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. The length of this vector is 2. So w4 is 1 divided by 2 times 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. And this vector forms an orthonormal basis in the eigenspace for f with eigenvalue minus 2. So since f is a symmetric linear operator, 
the eigenvectors with different eigenvalues are automatically orthogonal. And now we can simply write down the answer. So the diagonal form of our linear operator is a diagonal matrix, which has the eigenvalues with the corresponding multiplicities on the main diagonal. So it's a diagonal matrix where on the main diagonal we have 0, 0, 2, minus 2. And the transformation matrix is formed by the corresponding eigenvectors. The only thing we need to make sure that the eigenvectors which we write correspond to the eigenvalues as written in the diagonal matrix. So in the diagonal matrix we have zeros at the first two diagonal elements, so in the first two columns in the transformation matrix, we write the corresponding eigenvectors. So we take out one half as the common factor from the matrix, so it's one half times and then minus square root of two, zero, square root of two, zero, this is the first column, zero minus square root of two, zero, square root of two, it's the second column. And then the third diagonal element in the diagonal form is 2. So the third column is the eigenvector for 2, which is 1, 1, 1, 1. Recall that 1 half is taken out. And finally, for the last eigenvalue minus 2, in the last column we have 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. And this completes problem 1. Problem 2. Diagonalize and determine the matrix and the signature for the quadratic form phi on R4, which is given by the following expression. Phi of x is equal to 3x1 squared plus 5x2 squared plus 3x3 squared plus 2x4 squared minus 6x1 x2 plus 6x1 x3 minus 6x2 x3 minus 4x2 x4 minus 4x3x4. Solution. So we start by writing down immediately the matrix of this quadratic form in the standard basis. So here is the expression of the quadratic form. And on the main diagonal, we write the coefficients at the squares of our variables. 3x1 squared means that we put 3 in position 1, 1. 5x2 squared, we put 5 in position 2, 2. 3x3 squared, we put 3 in position 3, 3. 2x4 squared, we put 2 in position 4, 4. Next, we have minus 6x1, x2. So we put half of it, minus 3 in position 1, 2, and minus 3 in position 2, 1. Plus 6x1, x3. So we put half of it, 3 in position 1, 3, and 3 in position 3, 1. There is no x1, x4, so we put 0 in position 1, 4, and 0 in position 4, 1. Then we have minus 6, x2, x3, so minus 3 goes in position 2, 3, and minus 3 in position 3, 2. Minus 4, x2, x4, so we get minus 2 in position 2, 4, and minus 2 in position 4, 2. And finally, minus 4, x3, x4, minus 2 goes in position 3, 4, and minus 2 goes in position 4, 3. So this is a symmetric matrix, and this is the matrix of our quadratic form in the normal basis. So our next assignment is to diagonalize the form. We can, of course, try to diagonalize this matrix, but it is more complicated than to diagonalize a quadratic form by completing the squares. So we choose the easier method to diagonalize the form by completing the squares. So we take the expression of our form and we mark all elements which contain x1. So it's 3x1 squared minus 6x1 x2 plus 6x1 x3. So we represent it as the square of an expression. So we take 3 out of the bracket and then we take x1 minus, so 6 divided by 3 and then by 2, just 1, minus x2 plus 6 divided by 3 and then by 2, which is plus x3. So we take 3 times x1 minus x2 plus x3 squared. When we open this square, 
we get all these three summons, which are marked here in magenta, but we also have some extra summons. The first one will be 3x2 squared, so we subtract it. Then we will have 3x3 squared, we subtract it, and then we will have minus 2 times 3x2x3, so minus 6x2x3. So we add the summon for the compensation. And now the magenta part in the second line is equal to the magenta part in the first line. And we copy all the remaining summons from the first line. So now the second line is exactly equal to the first line. So we denote x1 minus x2 plus x3 as y1, and then we will get 3y1 squared. Now we have minus 3x2 squared plus 5x2 squared, which is plus 2x2 squared, minus 3x3 squared plus 3x3 squared, which is 0. And then we will have plus 2x4 squared here, plus 6x2x3 minus 6x2x3. This just disappears. And we have minus 4x2x4 minus 4x3x4. So now here we mark all the summons which contain x2. This is 2x2 squared minus 4x2x4. So we can write this as 2 times x2 minus 4 divided by 2 and then again by 2 minus x4 squared. When we open the square, we will get 2x2 squared minus 4x2x4 and then extra 2x4 squared, which we subtract. And now the violet part here is equal to the violet part here. And then we copy the remaining parts directly from here to here. So now here we have minus 2x4 squared plus 2x4 squared. It cancels each other. And we get the expression 3y1 squared plus, we call x2 minus x4 y2 plus 2y2 squared minus 4x3x4. So now here there are no squares present, so in order to introduce them, we need to do the hyperbolic change of bases, where we denote x3 by y3 plus y4, and x4 by y3 minus y4. And with this change of bases, our expression becomes 3y1 squared plus 2y2 squared minus 4y3 squared plus 4y4 squared. This is our diagonal form. And in this diagonal form, we see that this is a sum of four squares, and three coefficients are positive and one is negative. So the signature is 3, 1. And in order to determine the transformation matrix, recall that our old coordinates were x1, x2, x3, x4, and our new coordinates are y1, y2, y3, y4. And y1 is equal to x1 minus x2 plus x3, while y2 is equal to x2 minus x4. And from the hyperbolic change, we have x3 is equal to y3 plus y4, and x4 is equal to y3 minus y4. So now we want to obtain the transformation matrix from the original basis to the new basis. Using this transformation matrix, we can multiply it with the new coordinates to get the old coordinates. So to get this matrix, we need the expression of the old coordinates in terms of the new coordinates. We have this for x3 and x4. So now let's compute it for x2. So x2 is equal to y2 plus x4, which is y3 minus y4. So x2 is y2 plus y3 minus y4. And from here, x1 is y1 plus x2 minus x3. So we know this is an expression for x2, and this is an expression for x3. So x1 is equal to y1 plus y2 minus 2y4. And now we can simply write down the transformation matrix from old to new coordinates. So Row-wise, the first row are coefficients for x1, so 1, 1, 0, minus 2 from here. Second row for x2, 0, 1, 1, minus 1. Third row for x3, 0, 0, 1, 1. And the last row for x4, 0, 0, 1, minus 1. This is our transformation matrix.
Problem 3. Determine all values of the real parameter a for which the quadratic form psi on R3, given by the following expression, is positive definite. Psi of x is equal to x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared plus 2ax1 x3. Again, we diagonalize our form by completing the squares. When we diagonalize the form, we will be able to read off the signature, and this is what determines when the form is positive definite. So x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared plus 2a x1 x3. So we have two summons, x1 squared and 2a x1 x3, which contain x1. So we write this as x1 plus a x3 squared. So this gives us an extra x3 squared times a squared. So we need to subtract it. And we copy plus x2 squared plus x3 squared. Now, if you simplify this expression, we will get y1 squared, where y1 is x1 plus ax3 plus x2 squared from here, plus 1 minus a squared times x3 squared. So if we take y2 to be x2 and y3 to be x3, we will get the expression y1 squared plus y2 squared plus 1 minus a squared times y3 squared. A quadratic form is positive definite if and only if, in the diagonal expression for this form, all coefficients are positive. In other words, if and only if it has a signature, the dimension of the space, comma, zero. So in our form, all coefficients are positive if and only if 1 minus a squared is a positive real number. And this happens if and only if the absolute value of a is less than 1. This is the answer to problem 3. Problem 4. Diagonalize in an orthonormal basis and determine the signature of the quadratic form phi on E3 given in the standard basis by the following expression. Phi of x is equal to 2x1 squared minus x2 squared plus 2x3 squared minus 6x1 x3. The matrix of this form phi in the standard basis is the following matrix. So we write the coefficients of the squares on the main diagonal, 2, minus 1, and 2, and the coefficient minus 6 at x1, x3 is divided by half. So we write minus 3 at the position 1, 3, and minus 3 in the position 3, 1, and the rest is 0. So this is our matrix. It's a symmetric matrix, and we need to diagonalize it in an orthonormal basis. So as usual, we start any such diagonalization by computing the characteristic polynomial. So the characteristic polynomial for this matrix is the determinant of the matrix which we obtain when we take our matrix and subtract x on the main diagonal. So we have the matrix 2 minus x, 0 minus 3, 0 minus 1 minus x, 0 minus 3, 0, 2 minus x. The determinant of this matrix, we can expand it with respect to the second row, for example. So we will get two summons which are 0 because of 0 here and 0 here. And the third summon will be minus 1 minus x from here times the determinant of 2 minus x minus 3 minus 3 to minus x which is 2 minus x squared minus 9. This is a difference between two squares, so we get minus 1 minus x times 2 minus x minus 3 times 2 minus x plus 3. And so we get minus 1 minus x squared times 5 minus x. So we have two eigenvalues. The eigenvalue lambda 1, which is equal to minus 1 with algebraic multiplicity 2, and the eigenvalue lambda 2, which is equal to 5, with algebraic multiplicity 1. So the eigenvectors for the eigenvalue lambda 1, which is equal to minus 1, are the solutions to the homogeneous system of linear equations, whose matrix is obtained from our matrix by subtracting minus 1 on the main diagonal. 
So we get the matrix 3, 0, minus 3, 0, 0, 0, minus 3, 0, 3. So we can delete the zero row. The two other rows are linearly dependent. We delete one of them. And so we divide the first row by 3 and get the matrix 1, 0, minus 1. This is a row echelon matrix with the leading element 1 in the first column. So we can take x2 and x3 as the free variables and obtain from this matrix the equation x1 is equal to x3 and the two trivial equations x2 is equal to x2 and x3 is equal to x3 for the free variables. In the vector form, we get x1, x2, x3 is equal to x2 times the coefficient vector 0, 1, 0 plus x3 times the coefficient vector 1, 0, 1. Consequently, the vectors v1, which is 0, 1, 0, and v2, which is 1, 0, 1, they form a basis in the eigenspace for our matrix with eigenvalue minus 1. Again, observe that these two vectors are orthogonal. We got lucky. So we don't need to make them orthogonal. We only need to make them to be lengths 1. So we only need to norm them. So we denote by w1 the vector v1 divided by the length of v1, which is 0, 1, 0, because the length of this vector is 1. And w2 is v2 divided by the length of v2. v2 was 1, 0, 1. So w2 will be 1 divided by the square root of 2 times 1, 0, 1. And now the vectors w1 and w2 form an orthonormal basis in the subspace of all eigenvectors for our matrix with eigenvalue minus 1. For the second eigenvalue 5, the eigenvectors are the solutions to the homogeneous system of linear equations whose matrix is obtained from our matrix by subtracting 5 on the main diagonal. So we get the matrix minus 3, 0, minus 3, 0, minus 6, 0, minus 3, 0, minus 3. So the rows 1 and 3 are the same. We delete row 3. We divide row 1 by minus 3 and row 2 by minus 6. And so we get the matrix 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. This is a row echelon form with leading elements in the columns 1 and 2. So we can take x3 as a free variable and obtain from the first equation x1 is equal to minus x3. From the second equation, x2 is equal to 0. And for the free variable, the trivial equation, x3 is equal to x3. And now in the vector form, x1, x2, x3 is equal to x3 times the coefficient vector minus 1, 0, 1. So this is only one vector, this vector minus 1, 0, 1. It's a basis in the eigenspace for our matrix with eigenvalue 5. We norm this vector, so we denote by w3 the vector v3 divided by its length. The length of v3 is root of 2, so the answer is 1 divided by root of 2 times minus 1, 0, 1. This vector is an orthonormal basis in the eigenspace for our matrix with eigenvalue 5. So now we can write down the answer. The diagonal form is a diagonal matrix with our eigenvalues on the main diagonal, and the eigenvalues are given with their multiplicities. So we have minus 1, minus 1, and 5 on the main diagonal. So the transformation matrix consists of our eigenvectors. So we take out 1 divided by root of 2. So the first vector will then be 0, root of 2, 0. It's an eigenvector with eigenvalue minus 1. Then we will have 1, 0, 1. It's an eigenvector with eigenvalue minus 1. And finally, we will have minus 1, 0, 1. It's an eigenvector for the eigenvalue 5. This is our transformation matrix to an orthonormal basis in which our form has this diagonal matrix. And then we see that we have two negative eigenvalues and one positive, which means that the signature of our form is 1, 2. So one positive eigenvalue and two negative. This completes problem 4. Problem 5. Prove that a linear operator f on a vector space V is diagonalizable if and only if 
there is a polynomial alpha with real coefficients, which is a product of different linear factors, such that alpha of f is equal to zero. Solution. Let V be a basis such that the matrix of f in this basis is diagonal. Let lambda 1, lambda 2, and so on, lambda m be all different eigenvalues of f. Define the polynomial alpha of x as a product x minus lambda 1 times x minus lambda 2 and so on times x minus lambda m. By construction, alpha is a product of different linear factors. By linear factor, we mean a factor of the form x minus a constant. Also, if we plug in f instead of x in this polynomial, we will get f minus lambda 1 times f minus lambda 2 times and so on times f minus lambda m. Note that in our basis f, the matrix for the operator f minus lambda i is diagonal because the matrix of f is diagonal and the matrix of the scalar operator lambda i is also diagonal. So the difference between two diagonal matrices is a diagonal matrix. And this matrix also has zeros at all diagonal positions where f has lambda i. And since s has some lambda j on each diagonal position, it follows that for each diagonal position, at least one factor in this product will have zero at that diagonal position. And this means that the whole product is just zero. So indeed, alpha of f is zero, which shows that if f is diagonalizable, then alpha of f is zero for this concrete polynomial alpha, which is a product of different linear factors. Now let us prove the inverse implication. So conversely, assume that alpha of f is equal to zero for some polynomial alpha, which is a product of different linear factors. Of course, we may assume that alpha is as minimal as possible, so it's a product of as few linear factors as possible. And let lambda 1, lambda 2, and so on, lambda m be the roots of alpha. So then we can simply assume that alpha is equal to x minus lambda 1 times x minus lambda 2 times and so on. Now, for each lambda i, consider the eigenspace for f with this eigenvalue lambda i. So here i is between 1 and m. It is enough to prove that our space v is a direct sum of these eigenspaces. Because if this is the case, then f of course has an eigenbasis and hence is diagonalizable. So we only need to show that v is a direct sum of these eigenspaces. For each i, define the polynomial alpha i as alpha x divided by x minus lambda i. So alpha is a product of all x minus lambda i's. And to define alpha i, we take the factor x minus lambda i away from this product. Also, for each i, we define the polynomial beta i as the polynomial alpha i divided by the scalar alpha i evaluated at lambda i. Note that the scalar is non-zero because lambda 1, lambda 2, and so on, they all are different. In alpha i, we have taken away the factor x minus lambda i. So alpha i evaluated at lambda i is lambda i minus lambda 1, and so on, lambda i minus lambda i minus 1, times lambda i minus lambda i plus 1, and so on. So this is non-zero. So beta i of x is well defined. And now this beta has very interesting properties. First of all, it is the identity on the eigenspace for f with eigenvalue lambda i. So by definition, beta i is a product of factors of the form x minus lambda j divided by lambda i minus lambda j. But if we plug in f instead of x in this factor and evaluate at an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda i, the scalar which we get will be lambda i minus lambda j divided by lambda i minus lambda j, which is 1. So beta i of f acts as the identity on the eigenspace of f with eigenvalue lambda i. 
Next observation, beta i of f acts as zero on the eigenspace of f with eigenvalue lambda j for any j which is not equal to i. And this is because beta i of f contains as a factor f minus lambda j. Of course, this annihilates any eigenvector for eigenvalue lambda j. Finally, beta i of f, when applied to any element in V, produces an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda i. This is because if we take beta i of f and multiply with f minus lambda i, we get alpha of f up to some non-zero constant. And this is zero because alpha of f is zero. So beta i of f is a very special linear operator. It sends any vector to an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda i. It acts as the identity on all eigenvectors with eigenvalue lambda i, and it acts as zero on all other eigenvectors. So now we claim that the sum over all i of all these beta i's is the identity polynomial. In order to prove this, let's note that each beta i is a polynomial of degree at most m minus 1. In fact, exactly m minus 1, because it's a product of m minus 1 different terms times some non-zero constant. So the sum of such polynomials is, of course, a polynomial of degree at most m minus 1. At the same time, if we evaluate this sum at any point lambda j, where j is between 1 and m, then, because of our argumentation here, if we evaluate beta i at lambda i, we will get 1. So this is this argument. If we evaluate beta i at lambda j, we will get 0. So the sum of all beta i's evaluates at 1 at each point lambda j. So we have a polynomial of degree at most m minus 1, which has value 1 at m different points. So this polynomial must be the constant polynomial 1, because there is only one polynomial with that property, and the polynomial 1 has that property. But then this means that for any element w in w, the vector w is equal to the sum over all i, the image of w under beta i of f, which means that w is a sum of eigenvectors for the eigenvalues lambda 1 and so on lambda m, which implies exactly that the whole space V is a direct sum of these eigenspaces Vf lambda 1 and so on Vf lambda m. And this completes the proof of our problem. Let us finish with some additional problems and questions. Question 1. Diagonalize in an orthonormal basis the symmetric linear map f from E3 to E3, which is given by the following matrix in the standard basis. The matrix is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Question 2. Diagonalize and determine the matrix and signature for the quadratic form phi on R4 given by the expression phi of x is equal to x1, x2, minus x2, x3, minus x3, x4. Question 3. Diagonalize and determine the matrix and signature for the quadratic form phi on R4, which is given by the expression phi of x, is equal to x1 squared plus x3 squared plus 2x1, x2, plus 2x2, x3, plus 4x3, x4. Question 4. Diagonalize in an orthonormal basis and determine the signature for the quadratic form phi on E3 given by the expression phi of x is equal to minus x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared minus 4 x2 x3. Question 5. Prove that the sum of two positive definite quadratic forms is positive definite. Thank you very much and see you next time.